welcome. How are you guys today? Please sit comfortably, okay? We are about to start our 24th class, okay? So today we are going to correct our sixth list of exercises, right? So come with me, let's do it together. Okay, so the first question was uh, we had to complete the dialogue with the correct form of the verbs in parentheses, right? So remember, we have to use infinitives or gerunds depending right depending on the structure we are dealing with okay so let's let's begin let's do it together so it's a conversation the mother talks first okay pete your father and i are going on a trip this weekend please don't forget and then we have here take good care of the house don't forget so in this case right we are talking about something that must be done, right? So it's common that we use an infinitive, right? So don't forget, don't forget to take good care of the house, right? Don't forget to take good care of the house. Sure, mom, I won't, okay? So I will not forget, I won't forget. And the mother now says, would you mind, and then we have, Clean the fridge for me. Okay, remember, fridge is the same as refrigerator, okay? So, after would you mind, do you guys remember that we always use would you mind plus a verb in the gerund, okay? A verb ending in ing, remember that? So, it's a common structure for us, right? So, would you mind cleaning the fridge for me, okay? Would you mind cleaning the fridge for me? Okay. How do I do it? Now, he's asking for instructions, right? So he's asking his mom to give him suggestions, right? About how to clean the fridge. Now, she's going to start. First, be sure, and then we have, let it defrost for a couple hours. Remember this? So be sure to do something, right? Always infinitives. Be sure to let it defrost uh, for a couple hours. So, to let what defrost? To let the fridge, the refrigerator, right? And defrost when we want to lose the ice, right? When we want to melt the ice so that uh, it can be cleaned, all right? So, uh, be sure to let it defrost for a couple hours. Remember, do you guys understand a couple hours? A couple is always a pair, right? A pair of hours. So, a couple hours is, of course, not a very precise way to express, okay? But it means about, more or less, two hours, okay? About two hours, for a couple hours. Then, don't forget again, right? So, it's our second don't forget. After don't forget, we use infinitives, right? So, don't forget to unplug to unplug it, to unplug the fridge from the outlet, okay? Do you guys know what unplug and outlet mean? So unplug is the same as to disconnect. Do you guys remember, for example, uh, a few years ago, I think maybe many years ago, MTV, that TV channel, right? They used to have all, uh, many artists and they would present a show where they were unplugged, they were disconnected, right? All the instruments were playing live, but they were unplugged, okay? Also, we have here the outlet. An outlet is that, that thing we have, right? An, an electric uh, outlet is, that, is something we have in houses, right? Every room in the house has an outlet, at least, usually many outlets, where we can plug our appliances, for example, right? So everything needs an outlet because the outlet is the place from where uh, our appliances, they get energy from, right? They get energy from the outlet, okay? Usually it is um, it, it has two or three holes in, in it and then we just plug it and uh, the appliances receive energy, okay? So, uh, don't forget to unplug the fridge, to unplug it from the outlet. Use a mop now for wipe the floor after you finish. Remember, when we say for, it's possible in this case to use two ways, right? Use a mop to wipe, okay, now we can use an infinitive, but when we use the preposition for, we are obliged, okay, it's uh, mandatory to use 
um, the, to use the verb in the gerund, right? To use the verb ending in ing. So use a mop for wiping the floor after you finish. Okay, so to wipe is that something when, for example, food falls from uh, when we are eating and food falls on the floor. So sometimes it's necessary to wipe the floor, right? It's to clean, for example, usually um, with a cloth or with a mop. Okay, and now what is a mop? Okay, so he, he, the mom says he has to use a mop uh, for wiping the floor after he finishes. Now, fine. Okay, Pete says, okay, no problem. But what is a mop? A mop? You are so spoiled. So the mom says, my God, I cannot believe you don't know what a mop is, right? I mean, you are very spoiled. Spoiled is when you overindulge someone in its creation, right? Usually a child. So to spoil is this. You give everything the person wants. Okay, so the, then the, the person gets spoiled, okay? Doesn't like to work, doesn't like to do anything. Ju just wants people to serve him, okay? This is a spoiled person or a spoiled child, for example, okay? So, a mop, you are so spoiled. It's that household tool, so it's a tool, okay? A tool is something we use to, to perform some kind of work, right? It's a household tool used for... Now we have the verb to dry, right? So when the floor, for example, is wet, you have to dry, right? So used again, used for drying and washing surfaces, okay? For drying and washing surfaces. That's all because I used the preposition for, right? If I had used to, then it would be, it's that household to, used to dry and to wash surfaces, okay? So I can use both ways, but in this case here the answer should be verbs in the gerund because I use the preposition for, okay guys? So hope you guys understood. The, I think this was a very easy exercise, right? Exactly what we saw in our previous classes, right? About giving requests, making suggestions, right? Exactly what we just saw. Now let's continue now. Number two. Change the underlined part of these sentences into the negative. So, we have, okay, a sentence here. Some of these sentences have more than one verb. And I want to make the negative only with the part of the sentence which is underlined, okay? For example, walk faster, okay? Walk faster. How can I say that in the negative? I say, don't walk faster, okay? Or to make it... To give it a little more sense, we could say, don't walk so fast, right? This would be a more realistic sentence than the first one, right? Don't walk faster, but it's possible. It's not incorrect, right? It's grammatically, it is correct. But it, the second one makes more sense, right? It has a more clear use in English, right? So, don't walk so fast or don't walk faster is a way we use to make negatives with the imperative, right? The imperative is when we start the sentence with a verb and we want someone else to do something, right? Do this, right? Clean the floor, um, wipe the table, okay? Or don't clean the floor, don't wipe the table, don't go to the street, for example, don't cross the street. So these are ways we use to make negatives with the imperative, right? Now, the second one here, we also have an imperative, okay? This sentence is also an imperative sentence. But now I want to make the negative only in this part here where we have the infinitive. Remember, do you guys remember how to make a negative with infinitives? Let's see. Now, try to get up early. Try to get up early. And I don't want to say don't try to get up early, okay? This, is, this would be a correct sentence. It's possible to say don't try to get up early. No problem. But that's not what I wanted, okay? I wanted to say try and now to say to get up in the negative. How can we say that in the negative? So try not to get up early. Try not to get up early, okay? Now we have the negative here in the infinitive part of the sentence, okay? Try not to get up early. Let us see. Pay attention to the elderly. So elderly, do you guys understand elderly? Elderly means 
old people, right? People usually uh, after, 50, after their 50s or 60s, 60s, we call this group of people, we, call the, we can call them elderly, okay? The elderly. So, pay attention to the elderly. Pay attention to older people, okay? So, again, now we, I want again the negative in the, uh, in the imperative, right? So, pay attention, negative, don't pay attention. Very simple, right? Don't pay attention to the elderly. Let, or do not, of course, right? It's important to say that it's always possible. Every time we use don't, it's always possible to say do not, right? Do not pay attention to the elderly would also be correct, okay? Don't can always be replaced by do not, okay? Now, letter D. Make sure to take off your shoes. Make sure to take off your shoes. So, again, we are dealing with suggestions, right? And we have, again, a sentence in the imperative, but we have an infinitive part, okay? And to, to make the negative in the infinitive part, we say not to. Remember, very simple, right? So, make sure to take off your shoes. Make sure not to take off your shoes, okay? So, we could imagine a situation, for example, in which a group of people uh, is crossing a river, for example, and someone says, okay, make sure not to take off your shoes. Okay? It's possible. It's a possible situation. Not so obvious, right? I mean, uh, this is, would not be a common sentence to be said, but it's okay. It's possible. Grammatically, it is correct. Okay? Make sure not to take off your shoes. Okay, now, number three. This is a, uh, an exercise a little different from the exercises we've been doing uh, in the past classes, right? Now, I want you guys to identify there's one part of this sentence which has a mistake, which is wrong. And I want you guys to identify which is the part uh, that, that has a mistake and how can we fix this mistake, okay? So, let's see the example here. Don't bother Greg. He needs studying for tomorrow's test. Now, don't bother Greg is the same as don't disturb Greg, right? He, he is studying. Don't go there. Don't disturb him. Don't go bother him, okay? So, now, this is correct. No problem, okay? It's the negative in, a, in an imperative sentence. No problem. Don't bother Greg. He needs, correct, no problem. He needs, right? Normal conjugation for the simple present. He needs, correct. Now, he needs studying. No, folks, right? In this case here, we have to use the uh, infinitive, okay? We cannot use uh, gerund in this case. So, he needs to study for tomorrow's test, okay? Again, tomorrow's test, okay? We are talking about a possessive, okay? Uh, we have here tomorrow's test because the test is tomorrow, right? So, the incorrect letter is letter C. How to correct this sentence now? So, don't bother Greg. He needs to study for tomorrow's test. Don't bother him. He needs to study for tomorrow's test, okay? So this was very easy, very simple. Now, let's see the next, the, the, the next ones. Letter A. Honey, would you mind to turn down the radio? Sorry. Would you mind to turn the radio down? I am trying to sleep. Now, Honey, would you mind any no any problems here? No, all correct, right? Would you mind to turn? Can we say would you mind to turn? No. Remember, we already saw this today. Would you mind and a verb in the gerund, right? So it's going to be would you mind turning, correct? Would you mind turning the radio down? I am trying to sleep. Okay, all the rest is correct. So the incorrect one is letter B. And the correct sentence would be, Honey, would you mind turning the radio down? I am trying to sleep, okay? Also very easy, very simple, right? Letter B. I told you to do not forget the lights on. Our electric bill is too high. Now, which part of the sentence is incorrect? So, I told you to do not forget the lights on. Mm, something sounds weird, right? Something sounds strange. So, I told you to do not. Now, that's, that's the negative of an infinitive, right? For example, let's do this sentence in the affirmative, okay? So, I told you to forget. I told you to forget. Okay, 
So how to make the negative here? I told you not to forget, right? So the incorrect one is the letter B and the correct sentence would be I told you not to forget the lights on, okay? Our electric bill is too high. So electric bill is that bill that we receive every month where we have to pay for electricity, okay? So that's the electric bill. So the electric bill is already very high. So it's important not to forget the lights on, okay? Letter C. What a mess! You know a drawer is used to store in socks, right? Now let's see again. What a mess. Okay, no problem, right? So everything is out of place. It's a mess. What a mess. It's an exclamation. Okay. You know, no problem, you know a drawer is used, in here all correct, is used to store in socks. Wait, wait. A drawer is used to store socks, right? We have two options here. When we talk about uses, we can say to store or for storing, okay? So we will either we change the verb, so it cannot be a gerund here, must be infinitive, or we have to add the preposition for, okay? So here I corrected uh, the letter D, of course, is the incorrect one, and there, there are two options to correct the sentence, okay? We can say, what a mess, you know a drawer is used for storing, okay, for storing socks, or you know a drawer is used to store socks, right? Okay, so a drawer is used for storing or to store, okay? So in here we are just talking about uses, okay? And we can use both infinitives or gerunds, but we cannot mix them together, okay? It, either one or the other, right? And finally, letter D. I just asked him if he would move in his car from my space. Strange, right? I just asked it, I asked him, correct, right? I, I am the subject, him, of course, in this case here, he is the object, okay? So, I just asked him if he would move in. Remember, guys, every time we have a modal verb after modal verbs, we use the simple form of a verb, right? For example, can I play, can you go, would you mind, okay? So, after models, we do not use gerunds, okay? We also do not use infinitives, okay? We just use the simple form of the verb, okay? How so? Let's see. So, the incorrect one is letter C, and we, we would correct the sentence saying, I just asked him if he would move his car from my space. Now, a lot better, right? It sounds better. You see, always trust your hearing, always trust your ears, right? It's important to trust your feelings. So, I just asked him if he would move his car from my space. No problem, now it's correct. Not moving, okay? Would is a modal verb, and after modals, we use the simple form of a verb. Now, okay, the last, the last question I brought for you in this list is a question that was presented uh, in the entry test for ITA, right? Vestibular for ITA. So, ITA is a very good uh, school. Let's see what they asked. Now, they said in Portuguese, a melhor forma de concluir a sentença a seguir é... So, let's see how we can, how we can continue, how we can finish the sentence. Although personal appearance is of great importance when going to an interview for a job, the candidate should be careful. Now, okay, although, do you guys understand although? Although is like um, when we use a, a concession, okay? So, uh, we would uh, translate it in Portuguese usually for embora, okay? Embora. Although, embora, personal appearance, okay? Our personal appearance is of great importance, okay? So, it's very important when going to an interview for a job, okay, so if you have a job interview, it's important to wear good, uh, good clothes, right, to shave, so the personal appearance is very important. So, even though, embora this is true, even though this is something important, the candidate should be careful to not overdress, to do not overdress, 
not to overdress, do not overdress or not overdress. So this is only the negative of an infinitive, okay? So you see, something very simple was presented here in a very difficult test, right? So we know that we always say the candidate should be careful not to overdress. The correct would be letter C, okay? Something we saw, we just saw today, okay? So we should be careful. So be careful to cross the street, affirmative. Be careful to cross the street or be careful not to cross the street, okay? Always like this, that's how we make negatives with infinitives, okay, guys? So, uh, next class, we are going to start something very important in English, that are clauses, relative clauses, okay? It's when we have more than one, uh, more than one sentence, okay? They, and they are all together, okay? I'm going to show it's possible to, to use it uh, in many ways, so it is a much more complex sentence, okay? And we are going to start to see the clauses of time, okay? Relative clauses of time. I just, I uh, really hope to see you all next class. I hope you guys understood well this list. So if you have any doubts, please, you can just post them. I'll be glad to, to try to explain it better for you, okay? So thank you very much. Thank you all for watching next class. Then we are going to see uh, our first relative clause, the relative clause of time, okay? Thank you very much. See you all next class. I can do anything. I can reach any goal today. I can do what I want. I can be what I want.